is that club head tends to make too much of a direct movement to the golf ball. If there's one ball striking tip that could just help the majority of golfers out there, it would be getting the weight of the pressure to the lead side earlier. So if you're struggling with your golf game, the ball isn't behaving as you want, you haven't got as much control of the golf ball as you'd like, it's very likely that you'll be struggling with one, two or three of the things that we're gonna cover in this video because these are the three most common and most dangerous downswing faults that I see. But the good news is the next 10 minutes or so are gonna help you fix those issues. So let's start with number one. So the first killer downswing fault is when the club head takes too much of a direct line from the top of the backswing to the golf ball. Now it would make a lot of sense that that's the best way to do it. You know, the quickest way to get from A to B is a straight line. That would make a lot of sense. And that's possibly the reason why so many golfers make this fault. If I move up to the top of my golf swing, and from here we draw a straight line from the club head to the ball, just watch where my club head should actually go. Now with any luck, that looked like a fairly decent downswing, and you'll see that the club head didn't trace down that straight line. It actually went down towards the ground and then in towards the golf ball. That's what we see from the best players. That's what they do with their irons, their forwards, their drivers, all the clubs in their back. What we often see with the poorer golfer, or the golfer who's struggling a little bit more with the game, is that club head tends to make too much of a direct movement to the golf ball. So if that's the fault, how do we fix it? Well, I've used this before in previous videos, but I love this analogy. The clock face and it's the five o'clock drill. Imagine that I'm stood around this golf ball and I've got a clock face on the ground. So 12 o'clock is here, three is back towards the camera, six is behind me, and the target is nine. I really wanna have the sensation that from the top of my golf swing, my hands, my arms, and the club head are moving down to what I feel is five o'clock on that clock, clock face, which is around about here. Now, when I'm doing that on its own, there's no body turn. But watch what happens when I do that movement and then I add the body turn. Well, suddenly we arrive at this almost perfect delivery where the club shaft matches my toe line, the club head is in line with my hands. That's exactly where I need to be to deliver that club neutrally. So the club head from the top has to move down towards the ground and out towards the ball. It's the body turn that gives us the out but we have to actively add in the down, which is, I say me using my hands and my arms to push the club head down. What we often see is golfers up there trying to hold lag, trying to keep the hands really high, not trying to hit from the top. They're turning the body, and you can see what that's doing to the club head. It's making that club head and hands move out towards the ball too soon. Then we chop across it. Rarely ends well, we get those weak shots, those poor strikes. So the five o'clock drill is brilliant for fixing this. Up to the top. Work the club down to five, a couple of times on its own, add the body rotation, and then from there, you can just go through and hit it. So if you feel that's you, very good chance it will be, the five o'clock drill is brilliant to help you fix it. Right, the second really common killer downswing fault that you need to eradicate for your game, and this kind of specifically applies to the irons, is when we just get stuck on the back foot. Now you can think of this in different ways. You can call it hanging back, leaning back, scooping, or even just not getting enough weight to the lead side early enough. When we look at what the great players do, and we look at what the average golfer does who struggles, we see a huge difference when we can look at this part of the goal scene. What we would generally tend to see from the better player is very early in the downswing, probably by the time this lead arm is level with the ground, this is the downswing, they've already got about 80% of weight or pressure into that lead leg. If you took an average golfer, took a survey of 100, you wouldn't see that. In that point in the downswing, you'd often see the weight 50-50, maybe even favoring that back leg. From here, really difficult. We've now got milliseconds before the club hits the ball. You're likely to have too much weight on the back leg at impact. Contact is gonna to start to happen before the ball. You then start to lift away to try and miss the ground. We top the ball. You're just going to spend your time hitting thins and fats. And if you do happen to get a pretty good strike, maybe the ball's on a tee peg, you're going to be delivering far too much loft. So you get these really high shots and you don't get the distance. So what I really want you to try and do is have what we call the drift in transition. 
So what is the drift? Well, if I took an address, as I'm completing my backswing, so once the club reaches around about here, it's not finished its backswing yet, but as it completes its backswing, I want to feel like I'm drifting towards the target with my body. And you can see that hopefully happening within my midsection of my legs, that I'm drifting towards the target. And by the time my club finishes and begins its downswing, I'm feeling like I've got pressure through this lead side. If there's one ball striking tip that could just help the majority of golfers out there, it would be getting the weight of the pressure to the lead side earlier. This is how you do it. Drifting to your lead side in that transition phase. These little drills are brilliant. Even though they're slow, even though there's no golf ball, it's training me to understand when I should move my body relative to where the club head is during the swing. What we don't want to do is feel like we've got a backswing and then we start down, it's far too late. So how would we work that into a drill? Well, absolutely fine to do what we did previously, put a little pause in there. I'm going to go up and drift. There's my weight on my lead side. And then from there, I can go ahead and swing through. You'll notice, even though that ball went 60 yards through the air, I've hit the ground after the ball. It's exactly what I need. as evidence to show me that I did exactly what I needed to do. That, I guarantee you, will elevate your ball striking if you struggle with your eyes. And the final fault that you need to absolutely avoid in your golf swing is to do with that club face. We can't discuss common faults without talking about the open club face. It's spoken about so much, I've talked about it so much, but it is still the one thing that just holds so many golfers back from playing their best golf. If that club face is open during the downswing, you're gonna have a really tough job to get it onto target. You're gonna have a really tough job to hit the ball, the distances that you aspire to, so we need to fix it. So how do we fix it? Well, whether, whether the club face is open or closed in the downswing is really to do with what you're doing with your lead wrist. That's my left wrist. We'll call this pretty flat. We'll call this cupped and we'll call this arched. Arched is what we need to feel like we work towards in the downswing. We don't have to get there. But if we can work towards it, we're going to play some better golf. So for me to get towards the arch position, there's the back of my forearm. I'm very simply going to move my knuckles away from my forearm. It's this movement here. So when I get to the top of my golf swing, it's the same movement. I'm going to pull my knuckles away from my forearm. Now you'll notice what that does to the club face. It starts to point it more up towards the sky. And then if I take that position and move into a downswing, the club face is pointing more down towards the ground. Club face to sky, club face to ground is a stronger club face. That's going to give you better shots. It's going to give you more chance of doing all the things that we want to do in our golf swing, like rotate out the way, lean the club shaft forward, take divots, flight it better, compress it more. All of those things can happen when you strengthen the club face. Now, here's the bad news. Most of the players that you watch on TV, ladies tour, men's tour, they do this, but they don't know they're doing it. It's just instinctive. They've done it ever since they picked up a golf club. To them, it's natural. Unfortunately to you, it won't be natural. And it's gonna be a hard time for you to in integrate it into your swing. But if you wanna unlock some better golf, we have to work on it. So here's how we do it. We go up to the top, we twist as we work down. Up to the top, we twist as we work down. I'm really looking for that club face to point down towards the ground. Now, already some of you might be thinking you can use this with that first little exercise. Absolutely, you can use that five o'clock drill with this twist away of that lead wrist. The two are really strong combination. So, up to the top, twist and down. Club face is nice and strong. And you can see just how much more penetrated I can get that ball to go out there. Again, it's only gone 60, 70 yards, but I've got a divot. I controlled the face. I controlled the strike. It came off with lots of speed. The compression was there. You, even over 60, 70 yards, you can still get the sensations and the ideas that you need to. So if you're struggling with your game, I'd say there's a very good chance that you will be struggling with one of those, maybe two of them, maybe three of them. Work on those drills, put a bit of time in, and your golf will thank you for it. Hope that helped, and I hope to see you again here soon.